In 2017, the TUC leadership took a decision to refurbish the building because it had not seen any major refurbishment since 1960. The building had deteriorated so much so that the health, of, the health and safety of all of us who are occupying this building was in jeopardy. And our friends from the press, you can see what is going on here. If you want further details, you can enter the building and you'll see the work going on over there. The building needed a massive and very comprehensive refurbishment to improve its structural integrity and functional use, to arrest the continued decay, decay of the building, to provide an appropriate facelift of a building befitting the status of TUC, and to enhance security, convenience, comfort, and improved visual landscape. That's why you see the fence all around. We didn't have fence all like this. The refurbishment involved the following works, and it's very comprehensive. We have divided it into three phases. Lot 1, phase 1, lot 1, phase 2, and lot 2. In order not to jeopardize the health and safety of our occupants, the contractor requested that the TUC and all its affiliate unions, as well as other occupants of the building, including ICU, should temporarily relocate. This was not a pleasant decision we made. It was very difficult, and I knew the difficulties that you were going to face, how much it cost for you to relocate for two years. It was not a light decision for the executive committee to take. But upon reflection and the advice of the contractor, we decided that let us move. It's a very painful pill, but let's take it because that is the only way we can get cured. All occupants of the building, including TUC, have since moved out and relocated in various parts of Accra. TUC has moved to East Secretariat at Esger's house at Ringway Estate of Tosu since February 2019. ICU, which is not even a member of TUC, instead of moving to its own four-story building at Kokomimli, rather instructed its lawyers to write to inform TUC that ICU shall not move out of their offices in the trade union hall. Obviously, ICU leadership fear that because of their misbehavior, they might not regain access to the offices after refurbishment if they should vacate the building. Despite verbal and written assurances from the TUC that ICU will, will be allowed to return to its offices in the trading hall after completion of the refurbishment, the leadership of ICU filed an application for orders of interlocutory injunction at the High Court the Labor Division in Accra in June 2018 to restrain TUC and its Secretary General Dr. Yaba and others from interfering in the use and occupation of offices by ICU in the Hall of Trade Unions. We want to renovate our building and take us to court. ICU's application was dismissed by the court on the 9th of November 2018, five months after we stopped the renovation project. This delayed the refurbishment project for five months. In his ruling, Justice Jerome Nogo Nkrumah stated that, and I quote, I will, in the circumstances, decline ICU's application and say it's dismissed. However, I will hold the TUC to its assurance to ICU not to prevent it from returning to the property after the refurbishment. This is what the judge said. If the judge is saying that TUC should allow ICU back as we pursue the substantive case, we should allow ICU to return. What the judge is saying that you should move. If you don't move, how can you return? If you don't move up, if the judge is not saying he should stay, why should the judge say that we should allow you to return? I want you, I want you to 
take note of this. Because the action we took, which led to the misbehavior of ICU and all over the uh, country on the main day, is, is, is hinting on this. So it is important to note that the five month delay of the project cost TUC over 100,000 Ghana cities. Because the project contract says so. So as soon as the court ruled we should continue and we wrote to the contractor, they wrote to us that they have delayed and we have to pay. 